Hello yoga friends. I'm going to do a short little yin practice today. The poses we're going to do are sphinx and puppy dog. So let's begin. You're going to come down onto your bellies. Make sure you have your blocks and your bolster or your rolled up blanket or towel nearby. Mm. And all ten toes, toenails on the floor, extend your legs. Roll the inner thighs towards each other so that you really feel your leg bones are parallel. Best you can. And then Sphinx pose is <clears throat> has many aspects of it. The first thing is you want to make sure that your elbows are right underneath your shoulders if you're going to do a traditional Sphinx pose. Your fingers are wide. And if this causes you to have, I'm going to exaggerate here, your shoulders to really start to creep up towards your ears, then you can take your elbows in front and create a little triangle. Press the palms of your hands together. Interlock your thumbs. That helps with the stability. And either way, whenever your low back starts to give you some feedback, we're going to be in this pose for a little bit of time. If your back gives you some intensity, I'd like you to pull through the palms of your hands or through your forearms and press the toenails into the floor so that you feel your ankles lift and even your knees lifting. And you can feel like the front of your body where your belly button is, is elongating, that there seems to be a little more space there. So you can put this energy into it, muscular energy, and then you're going to relax. Ah. So that you can find that space in your low back. Yin practices are all about letting gravity do all the work. So we only activate our muscles when we need to in order that the, we can hold that yin pose for a little bit longer. The lowest rib, you're going to be able to feel your lowest rib. For some of you, hold, doing this pose like I'm showing is a little difficult. So you could take the block and just, oh, this feels good, just sit it below your lowest rib so it's not so intense. You could do the same with the blanket. So you always have your toys nearby to fill up the space and of course you can midway during this very interesting pose to hold for a long time you can take these things these props these toys and they can help you and feel free to do that as in all our yin practices we're breathing through our nose we're inhaling we're exhaling and we're noticing where the space is happening in the exhale. That's the good spot. For some of you who are practicing on your own and joining me today, you could always just simply close your eyes and go really, really deep in to how this pose is helping. So this is an opposite pose. This is really like a back bend. And, um, but supported by the ground and by your arms and by your legs. But this is an opposite pose that we do during our day. During our day, our chest is collapsing, our low back is flattening, and so this is a counter pose to all the things that we do and we're standing, sitting, chopping vegetables, etc. Keep breathing, and you can always take a moment and look over your left shoulder just so that you know what that feels like. It will feel like the whole right side of your body is opening up. The left side, you're going to get a lot of feedback, and then you come slowly. We don't move quickly in yin. We want to feel every single part. We want to feel that the breath is still moving even though things are intense. Keep breathing. Notice if on one side or the other there's a big difference. There's a big difference in my body. 
and I just noticed that I stopped breathing. So inhaling and exhaling, reminding myself, but also reminding you to keep the breath moving so that the breath is coming through to center, so that the breath is the signal to the body to cool out, to allow the space that needs to happen, all those tissues. Mm. Inhaling, mm. exhaling. I'm going to move from my modified sphinx pose back into a regular sphinx pose, just because it feels good. And of course you can cycle through each of those as well. Fingertips really wide. When you look at your hands, the middle fingers are parallel and the thumbs are facing each other. Lift, press the palm of your hand and lift your fingers a lot and spread them a lot. And now press each finger into the mat so that you can feel how solid your hands are on that mat. And then when you pull to create a little bit more space in your low back, you're going to feel quite powerful in this. Keep those shoulders down and away from your ears. And if things are getting intense and your mind is starting to uh, send little questions like, exactly how long are we going to stay in this pose? Did she say how long? She said a little bit of time. Feels like a little bit of time. And you can see, even as I say those questions, all of a sudden you're losing your awareness of your breath and how your body is working through this pose. So every time your mind starts interfering, go right back to your breath. You don't need to listen to it. It's kind of judgy. It's saying, I don't like this. I want to change. I want to do something else. So you just tell your mind that at this moment, you've decided to come to the mat to do a short little in practice and your mind can just be a little more quiet at the moment. <sighs> Inhaling. Exhaling. Hmm. Hmm. When we move from a pose that we've held for many, many minutes, it's really important to try hard to not engage muscles that might spring back to your old self. So we've been working on this low back. So what we can do when we come out of it, and you want to go as slowly as you can, so we're going to tuck left toes under, mm. right toes, take a moment. Then we're going to bend left elbow. So the left hand is moving towards the right elbow and the right hand towards the left. So we're just setting up our base here. It's hard not to engage things, but we're going to just do our best. So pressing down with our hands and our elbows, we're going to bring one knee, ugh, I'll groan for you too, and the other knee. And we'll tuck our toes under. Knees are really wide. It's almost like, but the butt is up. It's almost like a child's pose, but instead we call this puppy dog. If you would like to get your puppy dog legs parallel and go ahead, bring your arms forward. So it's not that the pelvis is going towards the heels. It's just this long line. So that you can feel the tissues. Pull your belly in for a moment and then release it. So you can feel the tissues in your low back and how they're responding. If holding this version of this yin pose it's not working for you. You could always bring your elbows underneath and the palms together. And of course you can build up, build up the earth towards your forehead so that you don't have to always be holding on to your heavy head. And of course you always have the option of just moving into, oh, that feels good shoelace side of the feet, 
a wide knee, child's pose. Press the palms together. Bring your forehead on that beautiful little spot, the pads of your thumbs. And chill here. And even if this, or even as the short sequence ends, you can stay here for as long as you'd like so that you can feel the full benefit of the Sphinx pose. And of course, you can always go to the video of Shavasana music and guided Shavasana to really have a full experience in this short little practice. Thank you so much for joining me. It means the world to me. Namaste.